Hi, I'm Randy Barnes. I want to take you through this uh, slide presentation that I gave at a breakfast here in Atlanta, Georgia, social media breakfast. You see a QR code down here in the corner. This is one of the few times I like to use uh, QR in, um, on the web. And this one gets you to my phone number. You may not want to put your phone number you know, in text in a website where a bot can scrape it and put you on a list or something. But uh, you might not mind putting it in, in a QR where it's embedded. If you scan this QR, you'll get my phone number and you can call me. QR, what is it? It's a, it's a two-dimensional code. It was developed by a, a, a car company, part of a Toyota, Denso Wave, back in 94. It's become very popular. They own a uh, patent to it and the rights to it, but they don't enforce that. So in effect, it's sort of like a, an open source property that the world has embraced and is having a great time with. Uh, 2D codes means two dimensions. It's reading, unlike the barcodes, which read left to right, this reads in two directions, left to right, and it reads from uh, top to bottom. Of course, QR is not the only uh, two-dimensional code out there. You can use uh, all types of other codes, and this is uh, a few of them, data matrix, Aztec PDF. You might have seen this one in the um, on the cover of some mail. It's used by the post office, and tag, of course, is a proprietary property of Microsoft. You see them uh, starting to pop up in advertising and on um, uh, promotional items by manufacturers. Who cares? The king of the game is the QR. You'll see this more often. More people are familiar with it and know what to do with it. I want to point out that the QR has one great advantage and that is it can store a lot of information, but that's not necessarily useful. You'll see from this graphic that the um, images appear more complicated the more data you put install them. This, for example, has over 4,000 down here in the bottom right corner uh, alphanumeric character possibilities, but how complex it is makes it impractical to show that on a screen or to print that in a high definition way and to be able to scan it with a high quality camera lens. It's just too complex. The, the first top left one is the, the least and that's uh, maybe 25 characters long. Perfect for a URL especially when you use a URL shortener. Uh, this graphic will take you to uh, a copy of this uh, web post where I got this infographic. I wanted to show this and talk about how um, widespread it is. This shows that 57% of Twitter and Facebook users have scanned a QR code before. 40% say they have scanned more than five. So you need a scanner. What's this all about? Really, it's uh, smartphones. In the U.S., uh, our phones don't come with a scanner, but you can download one and install it relatively easy. I'm going to show you just two of many. These are uh, my favorite on my Android. I use QuickMark. I also use it on an iPhone. But uh, the iOS, I like QR Quick Scan because it is really, really fast. It's also really, really simple. There's nothing you can do with it except scan it and look at your history. If you have a BlackBerry, you're still out there with that. There are a couple, uh, one of which is mobile tag, so you can Use that to scan um, QRs on your BlackBerry. Uh, look at this list. This is a list of applications, and it reminds me of the top 40 uh, records, you know, the hit list in music because different amps are going up and down uh, by the week. More and more being added, features are being added. It is too complicated to even try to keep up with, so I don't. Uh, presume to tell you what's best. I'll show you the two I use and there's many more. I try to use a lot of them but uh, I don't have any uh, strong feel for any. You can check out uh, qrmediaguide.com, a great site resource. This list uh, 155, I know it's a little bigger right now, uh, different sources that can generate a QR code. So if you want to make a QR code for yourself, you've got to have a QR generator. This is a great list. You'll also find lists of QR apps and other QR features over at the QR Media Guide. Some of the research I've done, I uh, did earlier this year back in April, Scan Life had a nice infographic, had spent uh, a good bit of effort to build research on who's scanning, demographics and such. And the thing I want to point out here is uh, 
couple things. One is more than half of the people scanning are an income above $50,000. So this is a serious business application and implication, which is that people who are scanning QR codes have money. They're also older than you think. They're the kind of people you want to find as a customer, generally speaking. Gender here, I was surprised to see that 73% were male versus female. 73%. That's a bit of a surprise. I thought, well, you know, I guess it's just we like to scan. The guys like to scan. But ladies don't feel left out because it turns out from uh, Mopioid says that 68% are female. So something doesn't compute. Who knows what's real? 73% male, 68% female. I've come up with my own research and spent vast amounts of energy and decided that 78.4% of statistics about QR codes are pure crap. You don't really need to put a lot of emphasis in the statistics out there other than the fact that it is growing like wildfire. The statistics about growth are all huge numbers, growing fast and furious. The two places I recommend to go and create QR codes I like to keep it simple and I like Bitly and I like Google. That's G O O dot G L. Google's URL shortener and Bitly's work very, very much alike. If you have a preference one over the other, I personally don't really care. It works very simply. You put your URL into the, the box and click and get a short URL. This is two benefits. One is you get a URL that's much fewer characters that in turn makes a much simpler QR code. Both of them will generate a QR code for you which you can then uh, copy and paste and use as you see fit. Lots of other resources out there to do that. Again, I'll, I'll refer you over to the uh, QR Media Guide, a great resource for that, finding all things QR. And now I want to just kind of take you through a few that I found out here in the real world. A couple of weeks ago, there was uh, an event here in Atlanta, SMI, Social Media Integration. This is a big conference that lasted for a couple of days and a lot of speakers coming in. The uh, cover of the program guide had a big QR code on it. Uh, one of the things I'll point out is it doesn't have any white space around the box, which uh, generally it should, but it worked perfectly. One of the other reasons that maybe offset that is it's large, easy to read for your reader. This was printed on the handout copy and it was also on the PDF file that was uh, sent around and available. When scanning this QR code, it came to the hashtag so you could follow the conversation that's ongoing there during that conference. That was very handy. And it took me uh, a few minutes to realize that on my name page, the QR code on that was actually to my Twitter account. So people there that were at the conference, we could scan each other's name tags to quickly get uh, a connection there through QR. Lots of other uses for QR. You can land it on a, a Wi-Fi connection. If you want to put one up in your business, people can scan it and get connected to the Wi-Fi. All kinds of ways to uh, connect this to websites through uh, any kind of a URL, social sites, app stores, calendars, you name it. Uh, you can even have it make a phone call, send an SMS text. Lots and lots of uh, opportunities there. I won't go too deep into that, but I do want to show you some things that um, I've seen lately. And by the way, I've seen a lot more of them lately than in, in April when I was really looking for these. They're just popping up more and more and more. This uh, other day I was at some friends and looking at the new Food & Wine magazine. This is the uh, October uh, version. had just come out and it had a QR code. Of course, I had to scan that right away. Find out that it takes you to a video about a contest that they're having. It's kind of a behind the scenes uh, explanational video and it was a uh, very uh, good use I think for QR and it also was using the Google shortener, the goo.gl website to generate a web code. I want to show you a, uh, an interesting thing about both Google and Bentley. If you get uh, a QR and it gives you a link to Google or a Bitly link on these shortened links, if you'll enter that link in your browser and click a plus sign at the end of it, uh, you'll get into the statistics that are behind that QR. And this one's interesting. This is uh, obviously when the magazine hit the stands. It's showing some activity and in that short amount of time there had been, uh, what's the number here, 317 clicks on that URL. 
you can look and see the uh, different uh, breakdown between uh, iPhone users, how many people are, are where geographically. This is uh, probably not perfect stats, but it's very interesting and helpful to watch. Just an hour later, I was up to uh, 328, so you can see it's uh, live over time. And another 24 hours, I'm at uh, 369. So it's interesting to follow other people that are using this and see what kind of uh, activity they're getting. And I think you'll find that the more interesting landing sites get more traffic. If I land on a page that's interesting to me, I'm going to take it and show it to you. You're going to see more people um, recommending it if you give them something worthwhile. If you just land on a website or something that's normal, I'm not going to share that with anybody. I don't care. On the local news here in Atlanta, there's one uh, station using QR in their stories, which lands you to a web page. Uh, more in uh, in depth, maybe look at that particular story. They may only well, can. Uh, you know, give it 60 seconds on the television spot, but can go a little further in this app. Now, the problem that I have is I have an old-time uh, tube TV, and it's not very uh, accurate. I can't scan it. I scan this from somebody else's uh, TV. I was having some trouble with some uh, applications and scanning it. So if you don't have an HD TV with a good screen, you might have some trouble with something like showing it on the screen. Speaking of trouble, here's a, a thing that Google did a while back. They're, they're famous for failing faster, testing everything. G uh, Google Places was sending restaurants uh, signs to put on the door with a QR code on it, but they stopped doing that because they discovered really that people going into a busy place to eat, they didn't have time to pull out their camera and scan the code and you know find out that they were already where they're going to be anyway. It didn't didn't make a lot of sense. So this program is no longer in place with Google. They moved on and it's uh, a good trial and I recommend if you test something give it, give it a, tr a fair try. If it doesn't work, move on. No sense in trying to uh, uh, make something work out if it doesn't want to work out. These are from catalogs. You see a lot of people get catalogs in the mail. More and more of them are having QR codes on it. This fashion magazine leads you to a back uh, behind the scenes fashion video of the, the, you know, the photography shoot that they did to make the pictures in the magazine. I thought this was a very good use of it. And a behind the scenes look is always something that uh, people that are interested in your product are going to be interested in. So that's a, a great thing. Another thing is discounts. This uh, sign in a restaurant downtown offering discounts to uh, students at Georgia State, which is uh, in the area. Some others in the neighborhood. This uh, one on a, a electronic, some kind of box there is from a, a local printer and found this Coinstar machine had a QR code for their club. This interesting uh, church had one. I think this sign is worth mentioning. It works for a couple of reasons. One is that this is uh, at Emory University. In any kind of a university place, there's always a lot of foot traffic. So people are walking by here and they're seeing that. And I give them great uh, points for making their QR code big. Too many uh, put too uh, small a QR on it. This one's big, it's noticeable. I don't have to get right up my hand to it to scan it. And I really uh, was impressed with that. The SMI conference I went to, there was uh, someone there who had their car uh, decked with a little billboard on the back, had a QR code. I talked to her and she said that the uh, printer had really no experience and begun doing this. They just printed a QR code that leads you to the website, so there's no really way to track traffic uh, scanned from that QR. I know I scanned it and it worked and I saw the website, so, you know, it's going to be... Uh, something I think that puts them, for me anyway, it puts them a little further up the line of, of professionalism because I look at that and I say, well, they're, they're sophisticated enough to have an, an address and a QR code. I like it. QR code uh, rules are very simple. This is my uh, uh, quick little list and I want to kind of go over it and make this uh, point so that you always, if you're going to produce them, kind of think about this. Keep it short. What that means is use the URL shorteners. If you're going to send a long link, 
uh, put it through a shortener, you're going to have a much better result. It's going to have much better scanning success. Make it big, kind of a conflict in terms, but big, I mean print it big. Remember the church sign, we want to have the QR code as big on the page. We want to notice it and we want to be able to scan it without putting the camera right up against it. So bigger is better. Land a mobile site, meaning if I land on the page, you know, I guess a hundred percent of the time people are going to be scanning your QR codes with a smartphone. That screen on the smartphone is all you have to work with. So if you land them on your regular web page, it's going to look terrible. It's going to be a kind of a letdown. Make something special. Make a page that is made for a mobile uh, viewing screen. You know, you want to have the display. Uh, look nice. You want to have it fit the display. You want to be legible. You don't have to scroll all over to be able to read anything. Make it a mobile friendly site. Give me something worth it. Don't just give me, send me to your web page. That's such a lot down. Let me have uh, a video. Give me a background uh, look. Give me a behind the scenes tour. Give me a coupon. Give me a discount. Give me a special offer. Give me something that I can't get other places. Give me something that's so worth it that I'm going to go share it with somebody else. Then do it again. Keep doing it. Whatever uh, you find that works, do more. If it doesn't work, try something else. I say that QR is for hard copy, meaning that uh, you don't need to put QR on your web pages. The one I mentioned up front with a telephone number, and it might be an exception. You might have uh, uses where a QR code on your web page has information that's not uh, surfable, you know, by the bots, uh, scrapable, that kind of stuff. But I think it's kind of stupid to have a QR code linking to a page that you're already at. I mean, if you're looking at the website, you know, if it's not a mobile site, chances are you're looking at it on a computer screen. You don't need to scan it. Even if you're on a mobile display, you don't need to scan it to get back to where you already are. So I don't think it makes a lot of sense to display QR codes. These, uh, uh, what are they called, plugins that put a WordPress uh, uh, QR code in your WordPress post. I don't think that's... Uh, effective at all and I would highly recommend you don't do it. You need to have QR codes where people are scanning, where they're standing, where they're not at a computer, where they're out in the world and no better place really than the airport. These are lighted billboards inside the airport. You walk past here at, uh, at the airport in Atlanta and these are on several billboards throughout uh, the airport area and I thought well that's kind of neat of course I'm going to scan it. I find that it is another uh, Google use and see that it's been scanned by uh, going to the web address, putting the plus in it, getting the back end, seeing the analytics 877 times in this time frame, month, and 6,676 that goes back, uh, say, five months time. So that's uh, quite a lot of scans. You can see that uh, if you look at the airport, um, uh, chart. I don't have that here, but you can see that the heavier traffic is on the weekends. That's when the people, more people are coming through, and I think they also have more time. They're not the uh, very uh, hurried business travelers that are in through the week. More leisurely uh, traffic coming through there the weekend, more scans. This page lands you on a HTML page. It's not an app. It's nothing special. It's just simple HTML. The small graphics lined up in the middle. Any web page, uh, any web browser of a smartphone will display this well. Clicking on any of the icons or information will take you to a discount or special offer to the shop. So you're giving some, something, something of value that's useful right then. They're in the airport. They might need something to eat, souvenirs, different things. So scanning uh, the code, giving them a discount and a way to get there, I think is a perfect idea. This is a small use of it. It can also be big. Uh, there are several out there, hundreds of square feet. This on an apartment building in Japan is uh, under construction and it gets great information where you can see uh, the QR. Say you're driving by the highway or on a train, you can scan the building and find information. Fantastic. One last look I'll give you is uh, an artist here I met uh, through Google Plus. And look at this, a great piece of art that has 
you know, multiple uses. This is going to hang in, a, in an art gallery or a museum type place. It's a perfect use of QR. It's more interesting than just black and white. It has some color into it. It looks arty. It functions well. I can picture something like this in a floor or built into a wall, especially at a place like, say, the train station where you get a schedule when you scan it. A lot of uses for this. I see malls, restaurants, uh, commercial buildings. Could be a directory. There are just a lot of uses come to mind. Hope that gives you some ideas. I used one here uh, this week. I had a class and had some tickets uh, available through a service online. The tickets were um, to be brought to the event that can be scanned. You can uh, handle uh, your ticket sales with something like this. It'd be very good. I had a great uh, event teaching people uh, web graphics using GIMP, and one of the things I did was to use the GIMP paintbrush with a QR code. And I made a paintbrush to just uh, draw with. So that's the end of the presentation. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what QR codes are, how they're being out there used in the real world. I'll refer you to the web. Google's your friend. Find a, a use for QR codes and send me a link. Thanks a lot.